Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Cyber Files, you know, Hedge on TV. Manuel here, your host as usual, and this time I have the distinct pleasure to have here once again on the show the one and only Joshua Bausch from Phoenix 404 team. Hello, thank you very much for having me again. As usual, always a pleasure. So Joshua, third place at the German Nationals, first attendance of a Pro Tour, 14th place at GP Warsaw. Quite a good year for you. Yes, it's... I hope it got better at some tournaments, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the streak is okay, so I, I like it. Sure, sure, sure. You would like to be first place everywhere, like every competitive oh, not, not player. Not first place, but I would love to top eight the GP finally. So. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up the good work and that's going to come. Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So all the events that we mentioned, I think they have something in common and uh, the fact that you played a Timo Energy deck. Yes, that's true. Absolutely. So that's what we're going to talk about. And uh, yeah, I would like to investigate a bit the sample choices that you made in preparation for Grand Prix Warsaw. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that was really nailed because at the end of the day, it paid off with a finish in the money, a honorable 14 place. I mean, yes. we're not talking about top eight if, yet, if, but if, even really in top good. 16, and there's a difference between top 16 and top 32. So Absolutely. there's a lot more money uh, that you get if you enter the top 16. So. I did it, and sure, it feels sure. good after one year of not cashing any GP. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, just opening a little digression here, you're part of the Phoenix 404 team. Mm -hmm. One of your uh, team members, Christian Hauk, yes. made it up to the top eight, so congratulations yes. to him. Yes. And, uh, I mean, this is a good result for him, of course, but for the whole team as well. I mean, this is the result of uh, teamwork, preparation, and everything. So, I think everyone contributed to, to make this happen. Yes, we have like, there, there were some people qualified for the Pro Tour and um, we talked to every German guy who were qualified to make the team because there was this team series at the Pro Tour. We didn't expect to uh, did well in it or even, yeah, be a contender for the, top, for the players. But there was this little clause who said, after the third Pro Tour, if you're top 16 of all teams, you get a free invite to the Pro Tour. Mm -hmm. So then we thought... Um, oh yeah, let's give it a try because you don't have to pay anything for it. It's just a free will for us and just you know, register eight, uh, six members or six people for it and then just try 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 your best. Sure. And um, yeah, we said if someone spikes, maybe we get a chance. So after the first happen. quarter, <laughs> we, we, it happened. Yeah, and we, we joked all around with it. I tested most of the time for the proto with Christian and uh, another guy named Marius Heuser. We three were always together in 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 a voice chat and just played uh, played um, limited, played standard, just played team or energy, and yeah, worked for him, not for me, but for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but at least one of you got yes, there, and yes. that's fantastic, absolutely. Okay, so back to team or energy, you put quite some work as a team yes. and yourself individually on this deck. So let's have a look first at your main deck configuration, the list. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know the archetype, we know what it does. We also did a previous video together yes. about uh, Timo Energy before uh, Ixalan kicked in in the stardom format. So I would like now to just focus on the flexi slots, if you don't mind, the fine tuning that you decided to go for, mm -hmm. for Grand Prix Warsaw. So let's talk about those flexi slots. So there's always a million difference in Timo Energy between if you play black or not. And um, why we not play black is because... The god is very good against all the other matchups than Timo Energy. It's insane against Timo as well, but it's it's a different role and plays out differently. Like you in Timo, you play like the tem the tempo game, and the god isn't like a tempish card. It's like you play the card. If it's unanswered, you win the game for sure. It's that powerful. But um, we went with four glory bringers and just played the aggressive. Always attacking, always being the tempo deck plan game, and yeah, we we thought it would be better than Scarab God, so we thought our other matchups other than Timur or Muros would be good. So yeah, we went with that. W what we changed from the proto deck was like we don't we didn't play any more magma sprays mm -hmm. because um, you I, I like the fact that you can on the draw kill a cup without uh, him attuning before or kill the um, Servant of the Conduit. But there is nothing else much you can kill. You can kill a Rook Refiner or like two for one yourself against the Scarab God. That's sometimes useful. 
but um, in the mono red matchup because they changed it a bit. They have many more free toughness guys, so it's harder that you find a target uh, for magma spray to be good. Sure. And um, yeah, that's why we changed it to three abrades. It's also good against the uh, God for Power's gift decks. There are more artifacts flying around. There's Madu that you can kill the part of Kirin with it, and you know sometimes kills a uh, torrential gear hulk just for free, because otherwise in this matchup this card would be dead. So yeah, and what we figured out was for the proto that the planeswalkers are really good. So we have two Chandras in the main deck. Sometimes there are three. Chandra, some, Torch of Ch Defiance. Yes, Chandra, okay. Torch of Defiance. We went with two because it was for us the perfect number and it yeah, was always good and always wins the game if unanswered. Mm -hmm. Okay, so three Abraid and two Chandra, Torch of Defiance. These are mm -hmm. the Flexus slots that you went for. Yeah, we went with two more uh, five drops as well. So we ah, have okay. one more Confiscation Coop and one more um, Sky Sovereign Console Flagship in the main deck. Um, for me personally, I like the console flagship, and I think it's perfectly um, uh, for the meta right now. You you need to pressure upon the planeswalkers uh, like the Nissa Steward of Elements or the Chandra Planeswalker. They're playing these cards and want to win the game with it. Sky Sovereign, you play it and can three damage to it, so it's not threatening any any um, your yeah, any ultimate soon or yeah, just that you can pressure just for playing a card. That's a unique effect right now if you're not playing black for Frasca's Contempt. Okay, okay. Anything else you would like to add? No, oh, there's ah, we play three Blistering Hydras because it's... I d we never know if you play three Will to or three Blistering Hydras, so we change the numbers, and so we went with less four drops this time, so I think it's perfectly fine to change it or play more Blistering Hydras, but I, I think for this configuration right now, we thought it would be best. Playing just three? Yes, playing okay. just three. Okay, okay, okay. This is a version that somehow it's uh, more all-in. You want to be aggressive. It's still a mid-range deck, but you want to be quite fast. Yeah, and most of the matchups play it out like... If you play the mirror, for example, you play a two-drop, and the other guy on the draw has to kill it. It's like, if it's serving, it's a cup, you just have to kill it. Otherwise, it gets too far ahead on tempo, just plays a four-drop on turn three, then sometimes you can't comprehend and just lose the game to it. But um, yeah, it's like being on the play, you're on the draw, how you play your matches if you're more controlling, sideboarding and more, uh, more removal spells or putting out removal spells if you're for the third game, if you're on the, on the play and stuff like this. So it's, it really depends against what you play and um, if you're on the play or on the draw, that's all changes. Sure, sure. The approach changes. Yes. Okay. Quite a lot, I far as yeah, well. Yeah, quite, 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 a, quite a lot. Mm -hmm. But it's always you. In most of the matches, if you, you want to play your two drop and then just follow it up by another energy card and by another energy card, just play around stuff that the open can have and just try to pressure as much as possible and um, don't be shy of using your energy for just pumping your Grishas, mm -hmm. Blitzing Hydro or Long Test Cup, for example. Okay, okay. Yeah, very good tips there. We said it all, I believe. So we can just start talking about the sideboard. Yes. So this is what you have. Three Green Belt Rampager. One Appetite of the Unnatural, two Chandra's Defeat, one Nissa, can you help me out? Steward of Elements. <laughs> yeah, because there's, there's a German one, I can't read it, okay. Thank you very much. One Confiscation Coop, two Viziers of Many Faces, two Reaver's Rebuke, and three Copies of Negate. Okay, so first of all, how did you come up with this particular cyber configuration? You were preparing for Grand Prix Warsaw, mm -hmm. thinking about, you know, what would you, what kind of decks you expect, uh, what the meta game is going to be, and so you prepared, you made your choices to make sure that you had that effective cyborg and cyber plans. So mm -hmm. how did you come up with this particular configuration? What kind of cyborg is this? So after the Pro Tour, it was like, GP Warsaw was one week after the Pro Tour. There were two new, probably new decks uh, in the finals of it, Solta Energy and uh, Blue White God Forest Gift. So you have to change up the cyborg like quite a lot because there is no decks that are attacking you. And uh, yeah, we we change it to be more consistent against Mono Red and attacking the new the new decks in the meta game and being a deck that's uh, being having a sideboard that's like against the whole top decks in the format right now. Okay. So you want to cover the widest the widest number range of, decks. of yeah, numbers. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. So that that's the kind of cyborg we're having here. 
Okay, very good. So, first here, three copies of Green Belt Rampager. Uh, this is uh, this is interesting. That's, that's <laughs> a spicy card we got yeah. from GP Warsaw. We I think we were like the only ones playing it. Um, this card earlier there was a meta game with Zahili and just only Madu. That wasn't really. I, I like this format, but um, it was a format where I played as Rampage and as a Healy deck as well, because it's matched up really, really good against all the aggressive strategies. So it has a, it's a 3-4 uh, creatures for just one mana with the with the ability that you, that you can't sure. just play it on turn one. Sure, the, the energy <laughs> clause here. Yes, the energy clause. Um, but it's a really nice card to just fit in your curve. It's just... If you you can double spell on turn three or on turn two with just a tune and Tim, and um, it's matches very good against all the aggressive creatures right now. You have Scrappy Scrounger, you have the Ferocidon, the Rampaging Ferocidon and Monoret, and all the other creatures. It's just like blocks everything, except for Hazoret, but Hazoret is a different problem. Sure. But um, yeah, this card matches up really good. It's good in the fringe matchups uh, where you just need to play a threat. And hold up um, some counter magic, for example, just fits in the curve every time, and it's like a filler card if you need to put out some more cards uh, in the match of the sideboard. It's just a card you can put in there. Okay, excellent. So actually, this fits perfectly in the strategy of your deck. It, yes. it's, a, it's a card that you can use, uh, as you said, uh, you c you can cover different matchups with, mm -hmm. with this card, and at the same time, if you you can still use it also to accumulate energy if you want to. Yes, you can just play. If you don't have two energy, you can yeah. play it and then you get one more energy. So it's never really dead, despite no, no. The, the restriction, let's call it like that. Yes, so yes. it's never really dead. Yeah. But most of the time with your deck, you will definitely have the two counters to, you have to pay to have this yeah. stain on the battlefield. And, exactly. And uh, four toughness. Four toughness is really good. strong. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, totally understood. So next we have Appetite for the Unnatural. So... Artifact and Enchantment hate. Yes, that's uh, most of the time for the artifact, but um, the enchantment comes up as well. For example, in the uh, Token's Mirror, there is a card, you, some enchantments you want to kill, and that's like covering um, you know, this kind of deck. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the two energy is relevant against Madu as well, because then you can just kill their heart or their artifact and gain two life. But uh, most of the time, it's like for a fringe matchup with um, enchantments in it. Okay, okay. Chandra's defeat. We were talking, you mentioned before Mono Red. Yes. There were a few changes. Yes. So I see here that it is really <laughs> targeting red stuff yes. in there. So why this card? I think red mom momentarily is the best color in standard right now. You see it everywhere in every deck. Like this uh, weekend, there was a GP in America. Um, it's like eight decks, all eight decks play red in it. So you have always a target. And uh, yeah, the best creatures in center right now are red. Yeah. So you were referring to Grand Prix Portland? Oh, Grand Prix Portland, okay. yes. Okay, okay, okay. Um, you kill Glorbringer with it, you kill all the mono red small creatures with it, you kill the Ferocid, and that's important with it, you kill Whirl of it also. So uh, yeah, one mana um, removal for everything, even for Chandra, and it's got this rummaging clause on it where when you kill Chandra with it, you uh, discard a card, draw a card, sometimes come. Sometimes it happens, and yeah. it's really handy. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Chandra is definitely that card you have to respect. I mean, you, you play it yourself. Yes, I play it myself. <laughs> so you know the value of yes. that card, absolutely. Okay, very good. So next, Nissa. Here. Nissa is a new addition. Uh, we had it for the Proto as well. It's, it's again, it's with the Crimpled Rampager. It per fits perfect into, into your curve because you can... It's the first Planeswalker who got an X uh, in its mana cost. Um, so you can play it for like three, four, five, whatever. And um, if you can protect it, it wins the game by herself because you keep adding card advantage, not even playing a need to cast the cards. It's just put it into the battlefield and it's perfectly set up, setting up herself with the plus two scry ability. And the ultimate is really threatening. I, I won many games with just minus six and dealing 10 damage to my opponents. And yeah, that's that's yeah, explaining yourself is like fitting sure. into the curve, sure. going into different matchups, and if you protect it once again by itself. Yeah, yeah. You can play it at almost any point of the game, but I guess it yeah. shines more 
when you are already in the mid mm. later game. It's a threat that dodges Essence Getter, who's got, um, yeah, is popular right now. Many people, even Timur, play some some decks play uh, Essence Getter in it. And if you play it on turn three and they hold up the Essence Getter, it's brutal for them. Sure, sure, because it's an answer that doesn't do anything at the yes. moment. You're casting your Planeswalker. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Totally understood. Confiscation Coop. You had this card already in your previous sideboard. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, you had two copies back then. Yes. Now only one, and uh, well, I guess one it's in the main deck now. One so. in the main deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to have one in the main deck right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also a change we didn't talk about before, but we didn't really compare about the, the yeah. list you had before and the list you had now because, of course, with the rotation and everything. Uh, we would need one episode just to cover yeah. <laughs> that particular part. <laughs> That's true. But yeah, we can briefly discuss a little bit why this split main deck and uh, uh, sideboard. And then also, I believe that this has still something to do with the uh, Hazard the Fervent. Hazard and... Sure. Yeah. But probably also other uses. But please explain me first why you have one copy in the main deck right now and not two copies in the sideboard. It's because um, it's a concession to the Scarab God. Scarab God is a card that is favored a lot by many, many people. Mm -hmm. And having an answer to it, it's yeah, it's it's like yeah, winning the game. If if he carries the Scarab God and you confiscate in Kubit, if it's then answered on your side, you win the game right away. Okay, and so you want to have already one confiscation group in the main yes. deck because of this, and it's, it's like one. It's the right? same as for Hazard as well. If you can seal Hazard with it, it's always ends the game for the mono red sure. guy. Sure, 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 sure. So confiscation coup is one of the, I think, one of the most important cards in standard right now. Mm -hmm. I think it's not so good in the, in the Timo mirror. I think the only card you can steal is uh, the Glorybringer. But if you hit it, it's perfect. Sure. But then there are some other targets. Well, but also if you don't have enough energy, it sometimes does does nothing. You can't never. I would okay. Not go the far that never, but uh, almost almost never steal a Hydra. Okay, but it's has, very hard. Let's yeah, say it's very hard. It's very hard mm -hmm. uh, because it's always sometimes most of the time got uh, hexproof. If you would like to target it, and um, five mana for for example the Sultai energy deck there. Oh, there is this blossom defense card. You can counter the card. That's why you don't go for. I I would not go for two copies in the main deck because. In some match, it's not that good. Okay, so that's why only one copy. Yes. Okay, we have, we've been talking about um, Scab God, Hazard the Fervent. Are there any any other tar targets that would require you to have actually two copies in the deck after sideboard, of course, because your side is one in? I think that's the two most important targets. But okay. Still, Glory Bringer is a yeah, nice and Glory Bringer get, possibly but, in the middle. But yeah, these yeah. Uh, these two tar cards are um, the most important ones because stealing these cards. Are, okay. Yeah, game changing. So this is a specific answer to these creatures, mm. Scarab God mm. and Hazard the Ferment. Sometimes there mm -hmm. is the Sky Sovereign as well. Some people play it. But, yeah, true, uh, yeah, true. Stealing this is also fine. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. But, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Vizier of Many Faces. That's a card that's um, a value card. It's like two creatures in one and always the best creature on the battlefield. So um, if you're Paul, you, it's like, in the, for example, in the Timo Mirror, it's like a Bristling Hydra mode of the, most of the time because if your opponent plays a Bristling Hydra on turn 4, you just play with your copy it, can trade with it, and you got a card advantage out of it. So it's a card advantage card for card advantage. Advan <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No problem. And make card advantage. And um, yeah, trades up very, very well okay. in all the matchups. But do you, you have need. to somehow find the right timing for it because? I don't know exactly how this one works. Mm -hmm. Let's just break it down. But in response, the the, the opponent's Hydra could gain hexproof. No, 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 no. That just doesn't just that doesn't matter. It's like doesn't a, matter. It's okay. a change. It's a changing. That's a, by entering the battlefield. It's this creature. So this one doesn't target. This one doesn't target. Oh, okay, very good. So okay. uh, it's like going to point this one out. The the only thing that can happen is yeah. if you if there is just one Rukrufine on the battlefield, you play this card, and the opponent's like shooting the Rukrufine in, in response. Then it doesn't have anything to target. Okay, and okay. It would the, just the, die because it's a zero zero creature. So I wouldn't recommend playing into removal spells. <laughs> okay. But with a hydra on the battlefield, okay. you normally thank uh, you for pointing this yeah. out. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's that's the reason for this card, making card advantage, and mm -hmm. it's always the best creature on the battlefield. Sure, sure, sure. So we we're, we're talking about the mirror and the possibility of having a, a blistering hydra on your own, 
Are there other matchups that you would like to side this one in? Is it another card that covers a good amount of different matchups? Or? It's like a smaller percentage of cards. Okay. It's like very good in the Timo Muro. That's why you, some people went up to four copies of it. But I think that's not necessary. And I think two cards, as two copies of the Vizier, it's like four, four cards in its own. So I think that's enough, mm-hmm. as in my opinion. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Now, Reaver's Rebuke. This is another fine-tuning thing. Yes, this is the card that uh, went quite, a, quite up a lot in um, our minds because it, for example, the um, Solta Energy matchup. Mm-hmm. That's one of the cards I mentioned, Confiscation Coupon. I think it's not very good um, because they have Blossoming Defense. So if you play your Confiscation Coop on any creature they have and he plays Blossom Defense, I think you almost lost the game right at that spot because you play five mana, waste your whole turn, and he's like one mana, I, I play more threats, one mana, counter your, your play, and you're getting very, very low uh, behind on tempo and mm. even on cards. So sometimes you need to reset the board, and that's what this card does. It's uh, a card that when you play it, you can win the game right away with it. In a board stall, you have many creatures, and you play this card, open and can't block anymore, you win the game. Or um, it's like when the cup goes too big, because with um, the snake, Winding Constrictor, um, the cup of your opponent gets bigger than yours. Sure. So they sure. need less, or they will need the same amount of energy, they get uh, a double so big. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. You We're have. talking about you playing against a four color energy in this case. No, it's like a Sultai or mm-hmm. they're, they're, a Sultai, like yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Sultai one. So sometimes you need to reset a board and that's like good for it. Mm-hmm. Um, we tested it in the mirror, in the normal mirror. We wouldn't play it against normal Timor because we, th- we don't think it's worth it to play it in there. It, this card is sometimes so powerful that it just wins even in there. So there's. Uh, no argue about that, but I think we don't need it in there. But we would sideboard it one copy of it into the four color version because okay. there is another answer for yeah, the sure, scarab. Sure, sure, sure. There is sometimes the case that you want sure. to reset the board and uh, the copies of the uh, the tokens that the scarab makes just go away. Mm-hmm. So four color team war or Sultai energy, or, these kind of decks, or or even the God Forest gift, uh, the God Forest gift decks, and even the token decks. So this card is good against. Ah, very true. You bounce the tokens, basically you, you get tokens. rid of them forever. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. And even the enchantment, so they lost their tempo, and you can just attack sometimes for lethal, or most of the time for lethal, and that's just a game-winning play. Yeah, sure. Game-breaking, and that's it. Yes. All right, very good. So last but not least, three copies of Negate. Yes, there are the controlling matchups, and mm-hmm. uh, the matchups with Fumigate. You have to kill, uh, kill the as well, or negate the sweepers. Most sure. of the time, there sure. is even more the Settle the Wreckage. It's a four mana white card that's if you attack, exiles all attacking creatures, like a path to exile to all your attacking creatures. And yeah, if you want to win in this ma- kind of matchups, you have to negate it. Sure, 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 sure. So that's the kind. Uh, that's the point for negate. We went at first. We uh, before the prototype of like four negates, two spell pierce, and it went down all the time because we think. You don't need that much counter magic to win this matchup. So most of the time for approach for the decks who play the um, the sweeper cards, um, win game one and then you bring in negate and you find the right spots to play negate and then you win the, yeah. your favorite in the post. And the right spots is when they try to control the board and you just say no. And I will keep my creatures most, yes, most yes, of the time. Yes, yeah. so you play two drop, three drop and then yeah. you can attack and sometimes you play around, settle the wreckage and... If you have to have to tap out for uh, yeah. Fumigate and you play like this, follow up by Glowbringer, you most of the time won the game. Okay. So it's like you have to find the right right point of it where you uh, sure. play Negate. The timing but, is important yes. here and uh, understanding where to when to use it and when to hold it, actually. Yes. So it's like evaluating your opponent's uh, threat and what it could do. Yes. Because sometimes they could try actually to lure your Negate and then play the sweeper or whatever. Yes. So you have to be careful to yes. analyze a bit. the end of turn, just cast out one of your guy, and then you have just to let it happen because yeah. that happens. Sure, sure, <laughs> And sure, sure. Uh, just then count on any gate or even the approach of the second sun. Not the first copy, the second copy. Sometimes come up, you counter the first copy, but then you have lethal on board and the seventh life gain. Wouldn't um, that you want to deny that? 
Um, but sometimes you, as so often as you just negate the second copy, that they don't win the game. But yeah, mm-hmm. negate is useful in that matchups. <laughs> <laughs> okay, does the job. Yes, absolutely right. Okay, very good. So we ended our sort of uh, uh, trip through your mm-hmm. sideboard. Thank you, us for thank you very much for guiding us through each single card. Yeah, no problem. And uh, yeah, we are coming back with the second video. We should do a sort of sideboard guide for all the different relevant matchups in the yes. current standard meta game. But at the moment, we reached the end for this episode. All right. So thank you very much, Joshua, for coming back to the show. No problem. Thank you very much. And a big thank you to all of you who've been watching this video. I hope you enjoyed because we surely did making it. And we are, as we said, coming back with a second video. So keep one eye open for that coming up in the future. In the meanwhile, if you want to let us know your thoughts, there's the comment section here on YouTube. Or if you want to follow us on Twitter and Facebook, facebook.com slash Hedron TV, twitter.com slash Hedron TV. And uh, last but not least, stay tuned on Hedron TV for the second part, the Cyber Guide of Timor Energy. And for now, it's goodbye. Goodbye, see you in the next video.